well if you're watching our videos uh, you will have seen very recently that we were over at Alfred and Marie's place trying to help they have uh, an ongoing uh, not a particularly a problem but they'll have something which has to be addressed so Beth knows how to navigate these things and was over there trying to help now I don't know what it is about Alfred but he always uh, maybe it's because he chooses to look uh, a little bit like the eccentric hermit and he wears his uh, he wears his hair very long and in a ponytail which I for myself I've never quite understood why um, older men do this but, but they do it and it's their choice and he has a long straggly beard and that's also his choice so people criticize him for that for his appearance of course those people who are by nature more more tidy I mean for myself um, I prefer to have things short and clipped and, and tidy looking but that's my choice too so really I, but I wanted to address the fact that when people view the marriage or the partnership of others they make certain judgments and they count their judgments as being the correct way and of course if you've ever had your problems diagnosed by someone else who sees things very simple or sees things very complicated or sees things dangerous then you will know that people put their own spin on what they see and I always feel through 10 years of running a blog I what I see all the time is that people people reveal themselves through their comments so that's not to have people start to be worried that, um, that every comment that they make will be held against them. Um, but it is true. It's true that when you ask people for advice, if you ask someone for advice, let's face it, we've all asked for advice in the past, in the present, and probably will in the future. We've asked for advice, usually of someone that we trust or certainly on someone who we think is more knowledgeable than we are about a certain subject and we tend to listen to our advice on the basis that they must know better otherwise why would you have asked people for advice anyway now I think it's true to say that people give you advice based on their own wins and losses, their own successes and failures. So if you talk to someone about money and you want their advice on investments and they've just been bankrupt, <laughs> don't you think that their advice will be coloured by their experience? Also, I see that there is uh, there is a man on YouTube and his way, he is an extremely successful and wealthy man. Now he gives advice about, I think his name is Kiyosaki. He gives his advice based on his experience and his experience is that he doesn't use his own money. He uses debt in order to do what he does. So he finances, he finances his projects and as I said he's an extremely successful man he finances his projects and he advocates the use of debt don't use your own money personally I've only ever found that debt becomes a millstone around your neck That's, um, that might be a uniquely British way of describing it a millstone was a huge huge tone stone that that they used to use to grind um, in a mill. So they grind rice and corn and, and wheat and 
and so on. So you put that round your neck and, uh, and jump in the water, right, if that's possible, and you would sink like a millstone. So he gives his advice based on his experience. Now, the thing is about living in the Philippines is it's really not for everyone. You know, if you're, if you're coming here and you think that everything is just going to be wonderful, that the weather is wonderful, that, uh, that everything is going to change for you, if you're very clever at something, if you think that you're going to show the Filipinos how to run their lives in a much, much better way, think again. This is, uh, it's a culture that's already running, and it's, it's running more or less, for better or for worse, without you. So, come and perhaps, if you are willing to change yourself, you may very well learn to be a lot happier than you are, wherever you're fleeing from. Let's face it, we all fled from where we used to live. I certainly, I fled from the UK to America, which had always been my dream. That's why I understand Filipinos and their dream to go to America. I went to America, I stayed in America for some 20 plus years and I became an American citizen and I fled to the Philippines. Now, um, I'm not ashamed to say that I would not be, as a retired person, as an, uh, a senior, I would not be able to live very well on my pensions. I have two. I have one from the time that I spent in the UK and paid into the system and I also have one from the time that I spent in the US. So yes, I have two what I laughingly call painfully modest um, pensions. And, and Beth and I, when I first met Beth, and this is one of the things that I wanted to touch on, is that in the in the comments you will always find people saying ah it's the money so they look at Alfred and they look at Marie and Marie is a young pretty lady and they say ah it's the money in fact that was one of the most recent um, I'm trying to find a place to pull in here so I can finish this video that was one of the things yes it's the money it's the money and they discount a whole thing now, saying that Alfred and Marie are only together for the money would be such an enormous, an enormous mistake. Alfred and Marie lead a very, very simple, modest life. Their house is not a, it's not a, a palace. It's a sensible... Uh, it's a sensible house that Alfred built himself. He over, he didn't knock the, the nails in. He, he built it himself. He oversaw the workers as they did it. And when they wanted to put one nail in, he said put two. And when they wanted to put two in, he said put four. So he oversaw it. And to that degree, he is a clever man, regardless of how he looks, in your estimation. He is actually a clever man. Now, he wants to do things himself. Now, the thing with Alfred and Marie is that Marie is the opposite. She is a shy, timid, sweet lady. And she's not courageous. She's not one to go out and seize the world by the throat and make them have it. You know, she's she's not Beth. She is a sweet lady. And when she, f I saw one of the other comments, we're really talking about marriage now, okay, in a general term, but specifically about the way that Alfred and Marie are judged. Now, when Alfred first met 
Marie, it was not a lightning bolt where they fell in love and, uh, and never left each other's side. It wasn't like that. Alfred, when, when he was introduced to Marie, he thought that she was very nice and she was very sweet. But it, he said, no, it, it, it couldn't happen between um, Marie and I. So later, he was living in that house that he's built alone. He was living alone and as his friends, we were concerned that he might fall because he's a, a little bit more than a little bit wobbly at the hips, okay? And we were concerned that he might fall and that nobody would know because he wouldn't be having any visitors. He has all of these visitors through Beth and I and we go there unashamedly and we make videos which people either love or hate but they watch. So this is what happened is that we suggested we suggested that Marie might be a good housekeeper and almost everyone agrees that Marie is a very good housekeeper because the place is always spotless. Now we managed to talk him into that and said there is no reason for there to be a, a romantic connection. And he saw the sense in this and, and he paid Marie uh, a wage to go in and to have her own room and to live there and to cook and to clean. It, she was his housekeeper. So all of you who say, who say, oh yeah, he's got a housekeeper and, uh, and, um, and a caregiver. Well, um, yes, in many ways you're right. And can you really tell me that you have looked at the, at the, uh, the, the personal columns in America or in the UK or in Australia and not seen that people regardless of their age, regardless of how wealthy they are or how poor they are or how modestly off they are, that they're not interested in security. So Alfred met many women before Marie and some of them were, were beautiful, some of them came and stayed only f for long enough to talk to Alfred and say this is not for me, um, which happens to everyone. It, everyone that you meet does not meet with your expectations or your chemistry or anything like that. Um, it's not always meet one and that's it. In America they even have meetings of a uh, hundred I don't know the numbers, I'm inventing them. 50, 50 males and 50 females. And they book a hall and they fill it with tables and chairs and people have the 10 minute interval or interview and they talk to someone and they try to find out, is this a person that I would be interested and would they be interested in me? And those, and they may go from table to table to table and interview on the basis of 10 minutes each go, whether they would find someone that they could spend their life with. So it, it's not just the Philippines. Plus, you can bet your life that every woman that would talk to every man would want to know several questions to be answered. What do you do? If we were together, how would you support us? Now, in these interviews, these 10 minute interviews, there are not many successes of homeless people that go clutching the last can of beer that they half consumed with no income and no future and no plan and no home and just be inundated with lovely women who just can't wait to be with them. It doesn't happen. We all want security. I always say in my videos about trying to make a sane decision, for me personally, 
I wouldn't want a woman who was what I call overtly sexual in her dress. So if I met someone, even if I see someone asking for, uh, requesting to be friends, if they're there and they're packing 38s and it's all hanging out, I just delete. I don't even entertain those. So we all have our boundaries and we meet those boundaries. Now, get back to Alfred. Marie went and was his housekeeper and they actually found that their love of a simple life matched. It was like a dovetail joint. Now, the decider came when Marie fell sick. Alfred took her to the hospital and he left her at the hospital and went home because he wasn't going to be staying at the hospital. He went home and then he saw what life would be without Marie and we met him. We met him uh, in, let me see, I think it was somewhere like Altorus, but we met him by chance in Talibon. And he said to me in, uh, in a, a really honest, from the heart way, he said, I've realized that Marie is the most wonderful girl in the world. She is the most wonderful girl in the Philippines. And I'm go this is going from housekeeper to realizing when she's not there that it wasn't just that she tidied the place and cooked his meals. And he said to me, and I'm hoping that when I ask her if she will be my girlfriend, that she will say no. I hope from the heart that she will say no because she is such a wonderful girl. He actually later when we were talking about so anyway he went to the hospital and he made his plea and she said yes. So when she went back to the house when she was well which was only a few days but she went back to the house and they started again in a new dynamic. Alfred later talking about Marie after they'd lived together, they'd made a garden. Marie was out there tending the garden. She kept a perfect house. She is a timid little soul and she gets very worried about things and she has to be she has to be gently handled, which is not easy, as you've seen, for Alfred because he's a bit of a raging bull. He told me that they were so happy. Now, this was a time when there was no electricity because Odette had struck. I think it was Odette. It had struck the house and the area was without electricity. So it was just them, no radio, no television. They, I don't think they even have a television. No phones because they couldn't charge the phones. No internet. It was just them. And he said to me, if you were to ask 20 people what their ideal life would be, what what would their ideal life would be? How would they live it? He said, you would have 20 different answers. He said, but Marie wants the same life that I want. He said, it, it couldn't be better. We are happy as we are. She accepts me. I accept her. I know that there's a lot of handling because she is a timid lady. 
but he was very happy and they have been happy now in the videos that you've been seeing recently you're only seeing Beth go down there and try to get through Alfred's hard-headedness in order to help him so you're not seeing the normal everyday day-to-day -day marriage so cut them a break be a little patient so getting on to marriage as a general thing people look at Beth and I and for some reason if they are have been with us for a long long time they accept the age difference between Beth and myself which actually is 50 years I've often said this when I talk about Beth and I when I met Beth I looked at her and I said she's too young and in truth she looked at me and said <laughs> he's too old and who can blame either of us but we stayed and we talked and we made an agreement that while I was away finishing up in uh, Mabalacat in San Fernando, the San Fernando area, Angeles, I would come and I would live in Cebu. We just felt that there was something there. It's not based on numbers. It's not trying to persuade the world that age is just a number. Age is not just a number. When I got up this morning, I bloody well knew that I was 84 years old. Okay, so marriage has to be worked at even if we were two 22 years old married for the first time in the honeymoon phase and just loving each other it would still take work and it takes work for Beth and I and one of the magic things about Beth and I if I may indulge is that we don't live on top of each other, right? We grant each other some space. I like to drive the Raptor to Taliban alone. I like to have my music. She doesn't like the same music. There's so much that proves that we should never be together. And yet we are. We work together, we have a mission which we have been working on. And this is one of the things that I advise. If you can if you can find someone who is dedicated, who is committed to the same kind of life as you, you have a very big chance of success. Even then, you'll have to work hard. So many things as a foreigner. I'm an artist, a sculptor, a musician. I'm on the artistic side. Beth is not. Beth is matter of fact. Get things done. Find the money to be able to support 65 students and somehow she gets people to go in and help to get these kids through college. And somehow it works and we think we think as many people do in failed marriages that having God at the center of our marriage is a big decider because when it really comes down to it the one I go to for advice is the Lord I go to the Bible I'm not a Bible scholar. I search that book and I'll find something which works for me. And I stay. And I work at making it a success. And because of the differences that we have, sometimes for me, and therefore by definition, sometimes for Beth, it takes a lot of work. So, if you're a foreigner and you're coming out here and you think that everything is going to change for you I tell you think again what I think of as my best advice for people coming out here for foreigners coming out here for another chance at life 
the best thing that you can do is for one month or more if you can manage it keep your mouth shut keep your eyes open and your ears tuned and look at what is happening around you look at how they do things here look at how men behave to women women to men look at how you are treated when you go to a store look at all of these things before you start trying to change the Philippines into something that looks like what you just fled from. That makes sense. You will help a great deal by waiting and looking at how they do things. Now I'd like to thank you, all of you people that view our videos and that support us that give us encouragement. Thank you for the wonderful letters that I get in email. Not so much in email because I don't check it so much, but in Messenger. You write and you tell me how you've met through our channel, which is the greatest compliment that you could give us. That we could perhaps hope that in some small way we've been able to connect people into having a happy marriage. Keep working at it. Thank you for supporting us, for liking. Thank you for commenting. I always love to, com to, to look at the comments and to read them and answer them. And thank you for subscribing. It's so very important in helping us to do what we do. And I thank you and wish you a good day.